I'm Fred McNeil and you're watching QAC TV. You're watching a show called Discover Queen Anne's. And what we do every week, we bring interesting guests in and you get to know a little bit about them and more importantly, what they're doing. I'm delighted to have with us Jay Falstead today. Jay, thank you for coming. Thank you, Fred. Beautiful spring day. There's hope in Maryland, right? There is hope in I Maryland. Think. Now, Jay, before we talk about Queen Anne's conservation, let's learn a little bit about you. Where did Jay Falstead grow up? So I grew up in uh, different parts of the country. Okay. I lived in Wisconsin as a little kid, um, then Washington State, then Wilmington, Delaware, and then eventually here. Mom and dad military or just? Uh, no, my father uh, ironically used to work for the DuPont company. Oh, okay, so, all right. Um, so he moved around had, as he? They had different plants around the country. Okay. And, uh, and their headquarters are in Wilmington, and so that's where I spent most of my- Most of your time? Yeah. Uh, brothers and sisters? I have a younger brother uh, who is an architect. Okay. And uh, I'm married. I have two kids, both Great. in the Queen Anne's County school system. How, uh, how old are you? They are 10 and 7. Oh, Lord, you're the busy years. Little yeah. League this, theater this. The, the, uh, all, all kinds of activities going on, so for sure. you're balancing professional life and fathering, right? Yes. And the missus? And she uh, has a lavender farm. Uh, we okay. have a business um, Talk in about the north that part of the county. Yeah, yeah, so we have a lavender farm. Uh, we grow lavender, hops, and a, uh, a berry called aronia. And then we also raise bees. Okay, now let's break those down. Uh, don't you make soaps and stuff? Is that yeah. correct? Okay. Tell me about we, the soap. Uh, we use the lavender for all different kinds of things. She okay. has a whole product line that, that she makes. Uh, it's called Calico Fields. and. Um, and this is our eighth year now of growing lavender. And it's growing well. Yeah, we just uh, recently built a, a new barn last year and uh, we're expanding a little bit. And um, Now you can get a plug in real quick, because remember we're promoting local businesses. If someone's interested in, hey, lavender soaps and products, who do yep. they contact? So uh, you can look it up online. It's uh, www.calicofieldslavender.com. And then um, every June, uh, usually Father's Day weekend, and we're going to be there, right? And we'll have a big there. open okay. event. We have a, a a week long or a weekend long event, Saturday and Sunday, and um, you can also see that on the website. Okay. And now, can you visit? The, is there like a store there, or everything's done online? Uh, we will be open on weekends after okay. Memorial Day, right. but then our big event is. Uh, the thing in June. I think next time we meet we're going to do a lavender soap commercial. That'd okay? be great. We'd like to have you up there. Okay. Now let's talk about, so we're balancing two children. We got a lavender farm, all types of good stuff. Let's talk about Queen Anne's conservation. All right? I mean, my feeling is government works best when you have the elected officials, you have the public, but we also have special groups, right, that promote special issues. So I'll be quiet. You tell me about Queen Anne's County Conservation. So Queen Anne's Conservation Association was um, loosely formed in the mid 60s and um, depending on how long you've been in the county you may remember that back in the 60s there was a proposal to put a nuclear power plant between I wasn't Centerville here but I hear them fussing out by Pioneer Point or something. Yeah, that's right, right? Yeah. and so back um, during that time there were four proposals uh, the Limerick power plant up in three mile at three mile right. islands um, Salem, which New Jersey. Which turned out to be a horror story, correct? Yeah, yeah which yeah. turned out to be a horror story. Um, Salem, New Jersey, and then Calvert Cliffs down in Calvert County. Okay. And then this one in Queen Anne's. All of the others were built. Um, the only one that wasn't constructed was the one in Queen Anne's County. And, and that was because of the people that were involved at the time. They were loosely formed in the mid-60s, officially became incorporated in 1971 and name themselves Queen Anne's Conservation Association. Okay, so we can thank the good Lord there's not a nuclear power plant at Pioneer Point to this group, right? That's right. Okay. It's, it started with a lot of local residents, both in Kent and Any Queen Anne's County. Any names that people might know? Or? Yeah, I mean, there's uh, the original board list um, is, is, there were quite a few people involved at the time. Okay. Um, the board was very diverse at the time, and uh, they were they were a terrific. Board. This was the issue. Okay. This was the main issue. Now, where is the organization gone from there? Yeah. So since that time, the organization has gone through some highs and lows, um, depending on the amount of pressure that's come into the county. Um, more recently, uh, projects like Four Seasons, uh, we've been very engaged on. Um, the Fast Sea project out in Roosburg, right. we were very engaged on. And then there's some been some smaller ones. The uh, the golf course expansion at Hunters Oak, we were involved with. Um, the Wheatlands at Queenstown, uh, the Unicorn Rubble Landfill up at 
up where I am in the All north right. part of the county, and a few other things. Jay, is there, I mean, is there a mission statement? I mean, is there, does the organization have, I mean, you're not anti-growth, are you? No, no absolutely no. not. That's I mean, a misconception one of the is, big misconceptions yeah, yeah, okay. out there. But no, the, the mission statement of the organization is to help promote the county's natural resources, okay. uh, watch out for the environment, um, promote the small towns, and, and really the unique features that we of have Queen in this Anne's county. county to try to keep this. This is a a very unique area sure. of the whole country, and um, it would be very easy for us to develop into something like Anne Arundel County. Um, the mission of the organization is we believe that we've got something special here, and so we ought to make every effort protect it, to, protect to educate it. citizens on what we have and to do whatever we can to protect it. Well, let's talk about that, educate the citizens. I mean, what, how does your organization do that, and what is your role in that? So I'm the executive director of okay. the organization. Okay. We have a staff of three, myself. And where are you? Um, I'm sorry. Is there a headquarters or an No, office? we don't have headquarters. Okay. We don't have a, an, an office per se, but we have a staff of three. Okay. Uh, Suzanne Hogan is our uh, communications director. And then we also have an on-staff attorney, Rosemary Green, uh, okay. who monitors some of the, the legal tech, legal dimensions of the organization. Um, <clears throat> in any case, what we do is, from an advocacy standpoint, whether there is an issue that um, originates out of the state or at the local level, or in the case of FASC at the federal level, right. we will do an analysis. We'll have experts come in and also evaluate um, what the impacts might be. Um, and then we determine whether or not that plan or that proposal is consistent with the comprehensive plan. We try and understand how it might impact citizens, um, how it might impact the environment, and we try and, and educate the community on, on exactly what they can expect. Okay. Deliver some facts, right? Deliver it's, the facts. It's all fact-based. Okay. Now, is there a board of directors or a board yes. of governors? How, do, yeah. how, does the, how, does the, how does the system work for you? So guys? we have... Um, we have a board of directors, all county citizens, some of which have been here a long, long okay. time, um, and then we have the staff. Now they, do they meet monthly and work with the staff to pick the issues, or how does it work? Yeah, so we meet kind of as issues arrive. Right. We don't have any set schedule okay. on board meetings. Okay. It's kind of variable. That's the best type of organization. Yeah, it, <laughs> it is. It's uh, and it, it, by doing it that way, it keeps us nimble yeah. um, uh, and it allows us to meet when it's necessary. Now, you really try to be fair. I mean, that'd be my impression. You tell me. I mean, you don't, right? Whatever the issue might be, whether it's FAST, or the Wheatlands, or whatever it is, you objectively look at the facts, right? Yeah, I mean, that's really the only way to do it. Because okay. if you try and go at it um, without having all those facts, you can really start to affect your credibility. And so the organization, since we've been around uh, since 1971, we're the oldest conservation organization on the Eastern Shore. Um, the board of directors cares about the long-term future of the organization, and so we take our time, really evaluate everything that needs to Get be Get the facts before you speak. Without question. What, Jay, are the hot-button issues right now? I, I hear we've got windmills that are too... What are, what, what are you guys dealing with now? Well, right now we have four active cases going on, okay. which I'll, I'll say are legal matters. Sure. Um, uh, we have the Four Seasons case down mm -hmm. on Kent Islands. Um, we have a, a sand and gravel operation over by Queenstown um, <clears throat> and a, a couple other smaller ones. The big issue right now is obviously um, uh, Four Seasons and the Route 8 sewer line down right. on Kent Island. Right. Those are two issues that we're real concerned about. The wind turbine project that you mentioned, we're... we're Talk about just because uh, every time I go out by Chesapeake College of 50, I see this wind turbine, but we've got some problems, what? Tell people, most people don't even know this wind turbine. This is a yeah. huge project yeah, okay. that has the potential to really um, alter the entire look of the Upper Eastern Shore. Um, right now, there's a company called Apex Energy, which is proposing 49 uh, wind turbines in an area of Kent County between Galena and Kennedyville. Okay, not in Queen Anne's, but Kent County. Yeah, okay. Um, the reason that we're involved in it is, one, because these things are... Uh, well over 500 feet tall, it will be visible. And that's the height, that's taller than the Washington Monument. Am I correct right. with that the figure? The Washington Monument okay. is 550 feet, and okay. the top of the blade on uh, one of these is almost 600, almost 600 feet. Jay, I know nothing about wind turbine. Why do we need it that, certainly the one at Chesapeake College is it can't be any more than 100, 150 feet. Why, why do we need a 550 foot? The company oh, will tell know. you um, okay. that that's where the wind is. Okay. And so this area is not 
typically a good area for wind energy okay. because it's okay. so variable. Um, uh, offshore would be preferred, uh, but this area just doesn't have the wind. So the only way okay. to really get it to you a minimum get up there and find is the you have to get up there. Okay, all right. Now, if here's people, what does Jay do? Tell me what you do, because I know I see you at meetings, I see you in the paper, and it's all right, you're a lobbyist, right? I and mean, it's a yes. paid position, and in America, if I drive to Washington, D.C., there are more lobbyists than there are stop signs. So tell me, what, is, what does Jay do? So as the executive director of the organization, I oversee staff, I oversee finance of the organization and make sure that we have the bills to, uh, we have the funding to pay our bills. Um, a big part of what we do is, is advocacy. And so we will meet with community groups pretty regularly. So you regularly. go out to any type of group and speak? Yeah. Okay. So we'll meet with the community. Okay. Um, we meet with legislators both at the state and local level. Okay. Uh, occasionally we'll meet with legislators at the federal level, depending on what the issue is. but. Yeah, basically a lobbyist's role is to advocate on You're behalf of... You're educating people on issues. That's right. right. Yeah, it's nothing more than that. Okay. Now, and that's part of our democratic process, right? I know of no that legislative body process. in the United States that doesn't have lobbyists knocking at the door every day, or if not 24-7. Right? There are lobbyists for any, any subjects. Okay. You can, you'll probably find a lobbyist somewhere for it. Now, let me ask you that. If someone is watching this program and says, hey... I'd like to talk to Jay, or I'd like to learn more about uh, Queen Anne's conservation. What, tell me uh, emails, phone numbers, how do we get in touch with you? So the, the website is www.qaca.org. Um, say, say that one more time. www.qaca.org. Okay. Um, you'll find a lot of very good information on our website. Uh, we're also on Facebook. And so uh, under the same name, Queen Anne's Conservation. Just type that on your Facebook account yep. right up top. Okay. It'll, it'll show up. Uh, to reach me, uh, people can email me direct. It, it's J A Y dot Falstead, F A L S T A D, at Q A C A dot org. And do that one more time. J dot Falstead at Q A C A dot org. Okay. Now, Jay, one, there's a misconception out there. Now, you tell me. You're not Republican or Democrat or uh, you're for certain issues, correct? I mean, does it matter if you're Republican or Democrat or left or right handed or aren't you trying to be fairly present? what you think is the correct answer to some concerns we have in the community. Is that a good as fair a five, statement? Yep, as yeah. a 501c3, the organization is prohibited from getting involved politically where we're out advocating for a particular okay. candidate or something like that. Um, we, however, can engage ourselves in issues, and we do. Um, you and that's will part of the American process, yep. right? Yeah. So you will recall a few years ago, um, there were two referendums. Mm -hmm. uh, those were both issues that we were very concerned about. Okay. We lobbied on them. We, uh, but they're nonpartisan, right? They're, they're nonpartisan, no, no. and ultimately, those referendum issues um, provided the people the opportunity to vote on it. And there is nothing more pure in the democratic process than that. Okay. So and that's important. We clear that up because I hear a lot of people: oh, they're left-wing tree huggers or right-wing tree huggers. You're not. You try to gather the facts, look at issues, and be fair. And sometimes people aren't going to agree with you, but that's the way the system works, right? That's the way the system works. Um, you know, I hear that myself, that we're anti-growth and anti-everything. We're really not. And, you know, if you think about it, Fred, if you look over the past 40 years, all of the permits that have been granted um, through the county's planning and zoning office, we've only challenged a handful of those. So of the thousands and thousands of proposals that have come forward, we've only um, challenged a few. There's some you think are not in the best interest of keeping Queen Anne's County the way it currently is, or, okay? Or okay. they're just in violation of the comprehensive okay. plan. Very good. Uh, you will remember just a couple years ago, the county commissioners wanted to rezone a bunch of property in the county. Mm -hmm. It was just in stark violation of the comprehensive plan. Right. And so, you know, we challenged You it. stood up and said, hey, this is fair. Yeah. Now, if I'm a Cub Scout or a Young Women's Club or a Lions Club, can they get you to come speak? Sure. And, okay. Yeah, I've spoken to uh, the Rotary Club uh, once or twice. And yeah, I'm happy to And you to encourage talk. that type of thing? We encourage it. Okay. The more we can get out in the community um, and describe what it is that we do, um, that's what the organization has been for the past 44 years. And that's the purpose of the group, all That right? is the purpose now, of the group. Now, Jay, let's do this again. If I'm, and you have a wonderful flyer, how do they get a hold of this pamphlet if they're interested? You have a wonderful pamphlet that looks like yeah. to me explains the A to Z of your organization. It has a lot of great information on there. Again, if they um, go onto our website, there's a way that they can reach us there. Um, okay. They can email me direct. We'll make sure that we can get them. Uh, 
as I mentioned, Suzanne Hogan's our communications director. She'll be happy to reach out to anybody. Now, how do they get in touch with Suzanne? What's that number? Same, same, number. same thing. Uh, use the um, the address that's on on the card okay. www.qaca.org. All right. And uh, and that's how you can do it. Yeah, we'll have some fun at the end here. If you had a magic wand, you and I were sitting here and we were kind of laughing. There's going to be a new courthouse 100 yards away from us. There's going to be a new county office building a mile from us, maybe even a YMCA. Where do you see, from you know, the Queen Anne's Conservation, where do you see Queen Anne's going in the next five, ten years? I mean, is it going to be this incremental growth? Or do you see the economy coming back and boom, Queen Anne's County? You got to... Well, I personally would like yeah. to maintain a lot of what we have. Um, obviously, growth is going to happen, and you know I'm willing to accept that. But as I think we were also talking earlier, what we have here is so unique and really unique in the entire country. Um, a county that's connected by a lot of small towns, uh, scenic waterways, those are all things that, that we they're ought to do. They're worth keeping, our, aren't they? They're, they're worth, worth keeping. keeping, and they're worth doing everything we can to protect. Okay, great. Well, look, let's wrap this up with two quick summaries. One, if I'm interested in your farm that sells all these goodies, or your wife's, I've got to be careful how I handle it. That's this. right. Well, how do they contact? That is uh, www.calicofieldslavender.com. And all types of neat things and a grand opening here coming up around Father's Day yes. of this year. Okay? If it's made with lavender, we probably have it. Okay. Hey, maybe some pride. Remember, I'm a dummy. What are some things we do with lavender besides, I mean, lavender soap, I know. What else do we do with lavender? Yeah, lavender is actually one of those things that's been around for thousands of years, and it's used for a lot of different kinds of things. Okay. Uh, we make soap lotions, lip balms, uh, we distill the oil, um, and we, once we have the oil, then we put that into a lot of different products. Okay, and more importantly, Queen Anne's County Conservation, if the, you've tickled them a little bit, say, hey, I, I kind of get involved with this group. They again contact yeah, you re via... call me, and uh, I'm happy to talk to them about what we're doing in the community, okay. things that we're working on, uh, www.qaca.org. And Susan Hogan's on staff now. They can contact her. Susan doesn't know it, but we just created 50 hours of work for her. Okay. Well, Jay, thank you for meeting me thank on this so beautiful much, day. All right. Good luck. All right. And thanks for having this outside. I can't think oh, of it. Oh, I want to get place. out of the studio. We've been stuck there since January. Yeah, thank you. This is Fred McNeil. You've been watching QAC TV, Discover Queen Anne's. Thank you for your time. My time's up, and we're going to see you next time.